Suppose we have the variables x equals 4 and y equals 5, and we want to multiply them. So normally to multiply 4 by 5, we'd write it like this, but we shouldn't do that with the variables because the multiplication symbol looks just like that x. Instead, we might write it like this with a dot between them, but what's even better is writing them directly next to each other. And this is great because writing letters next to each other is how we can write words. Let's say we have o equal to 1, n equal to 1, and e also equal to 1. That means that o n e, or 1 times 1 times 1, equals 1, which is very satisfying. And if we set t equal to 1 and w equal to 2, we get a similar result with 2. And we can do the same thing with 3. But can we keep going? Can we get this to work for all the numbers 0 through 9? Well, 0 is the easiest, and that's because we can just set z equal to 0 and it will multiply out. And, and this is not a problem because z doesn't appear anywhere else. So it only affects 0. And we can do something similar with 2. Once we decide what t and o should be, we just need to set w equal to 2 over t o. And that's also fine because w only appears in 2. And we can do the same with 4 using u, with 6 using x, and with 8 using g. But now what do we do? None of the other numbers have unique letters. Well, let's take a look at 4 and 5. Now, f only appears in these two numbers. And we can set f to get 5 to work without worrying about 4, because we can always adjust u later. And so using that principle, we can now ignore 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8 when we're looking for unique letters. So we know that 5 has unique f, and then we also have 1 with an o, 3 with an h, and 7 with an s. Now 9 still doesn't have any unique letters, but again we can ignore those, and now all of 9's letters are unique. And I'm not going to go through and do all the calculations, but now we know that yes, we can do 0 through 9. And we also learned that for each letter, we can get at least one number. And so this means that we can probably get a minimum of 26 numbers to work together. Although J and K don't appear in any numbers, so that's actually 24. But what is the maximum? How many can we do? Can we get every number? Here's an example. Let's say we have 3 equal to 3 and 20 equal to 20. And we want 23 to equal 23, but uh, if we ignore the space, then this multiplies out to be 60, and 60 does not equal 23. So we can't get every number. And this also seems to suggest that we can't do numbers that have more than one word in them, like this 23. Is that true? Well, here's another example where we have 3 and 100. And we'd want 300 to equal 300, uh, and in this case, it does. So what was the difference between 23 and 300? The key thing is the word order. 20 is greater than 3, but 3 is less than 100. When numbers go largest to smallest, like with 23, we add them. And we can also see this with 86 and 1050. But when numbers go smallest to largest, we multiply them, as we can see with 300, and also with 80,000 and 9 million. And so because they multiply, these smallest to largest numbers will work with our system. And not only that, but they work really well. Say we have 1, 2, and 3 that all work, and then we also have the word 100. Now we can get 1, 2, 3, and then also 100, 200, and 300. So we only needed four words, but we got six numbers that work correctly. And if we add in the word thousand, we get an additional six. So let's use this stacking of words to try and find a maximum. And to do that, we'll look at the anatomy of a number. Now we're only using numbers that go smallest to largest, so Big numbers, like thousand, million, billion, trillion, and so on, need to go at the end. So we'll put them on the right here. And we can only use one of these. You could say something like 1,000 million, 
and people would understand what you mean, but it's more correct to say one billion. So we won't use multiple of these. And then of course, you don't need one of these. You could just have a blank. Now what comes before this? The numbers that are less than a thousand. And these come in three groups. You can have one to nine, or 10 to 90, or 100 to 900. And to simplify this, we'll instead write this as one to nine, followed by either a blank or the word hundred. Now this is a lot of numbers, but we can go a step further. We don't need anything before these, but we could put the word negative. If the word negative equals negative one, then any positive number that works correctly will also have a corresponding negative number that also works correctly. Essentially, this doubles the amount of numbers. So now we have this format, we can create a formula for the amount of numbers that will work correctly. So we'll start with two, because we can choose either blank or negative. And then we'll multiply this by, we have two s, s for single digits, and this is getting multiplied by two because a single digit can either be followed by blank or hundred. And then we'll add to that d for double digits. This is 10 to 90. And that's not getting doubled because you could say 10 hundred, but it would be more proper to say a thousand. So we won't count 10 hundred. And then at the end, we multiply this by one plus h, h being huge numbers. And we're adding one because we could use blank. So now we have this formula. What's the maximum we can get it to? Well, we have 26 letters to choose from, but we know we only actually have 24 because we can't use J or K. And then we also lose Z because it only appears in zero and zero can't combine with anything. Although it's not a complete loss because we get to add plus one to the end of our formula because we do get the word zero. All right. Now we need to set aside two more letters to get the words negative and hundred because they are very important. And so now we have 21 to allocate between our single digits, double digits, and the huge numbers. Now, which of these three sets should we give the highest priority? It should be the single digits because they're getting doubled. We have two times S. And earlier we showed that we can do all nine of them. So we'll set aside nine letters to get one to nine. And now we're left with 12. So how should we split those 12 between the double digits and the huge numbers? Well, we can say 12 equals D plus H. And then if we subtract D from both sides, we're left with 12 minus D equals H. And then we can substitute that in for the H in our formula. And we can also substitute nine for S since we know we'll get nine of them, which gives us this. And then if we further simplify, we get this quadratic equation, negative two D squared minus 10 D plus 469. And so now we can graph this, or derive it, to find the maximum. So here's the graph of our equation, and our maximum is at negative two and a half comma 481 and a half. But this doesn't really make sense. This is saying we should have negative two and a half double digit words, but we can't have half of a word, and we also can't have negative words. So the best we can truly do is just say zero comma 469. Although this isn't right either, and that's because of the pesky letter Y. Y only appears in the double digits. So we have to have at least one. The best we can do is one comma four, five, seven. All right, so now we know that S equals nine, D equals one, because we have to have one double digit. And then if we remember 12 minus D is H, so 12 minus one is 11. So now we can plug these in. Although we should wait a second, because we can do a little better. Say that our double digit that we pick is 60. Well, if we divide both sides by six, then we get ty must be 10. And if that's true, then seven times ty is 70, and nine times ty is 90. So we essentially get these two extra words for free which means that D doesn't equal one, it will equal three. And we can do a similar thing with the huge numbers. If we get the words quintillion, sextillion, and quindecillion to work, 
we also get sextillion to work. So we're essentially getting another one for free. So h becomes 12. So now let's plug these in, and then we can simplify to get 2 times 21 times 13 plus 1, or 547. We should be able to get this to work for 547 numbers. So now it's time to do the calculations. I'm not going to walk through all of these, I'll just do the first two letters, because they're the easiest. So first we'll do z, which is the easiest, we just set that to 0. The next one will take three steps. So first we start with quindecillion, which equals 10 to the 48. And then we divide that by decillion, which equals 10 to the 33. And we can see that quin must be 10 to the 15. Okay. Next, we'll say quintillion equals 10 to the 18. And we'll divide out that quin, which equals 10 to the 15. And we see that tillion must equal 10 to the 3. Lastly, we know that trillion equals 10 to the 12. So we divide out this tillion, then we get r must be 10 to the 9. And we'll write that in its prime factorization of 2 to the 9 times 5 to the 9. So here we added our value for r. And if we carry out the rest of the calculations, we get values for the other variables. And yes, there are a lot of eighth roots and a lot of complex numbers. But what's important is this works for 547 numbers. So to find a number that this set of variables works for, take either blank or negative, and then follow it with one of the digits 1 through 9 with either blank or 100. Or instead of that, you could use 60, 70, or 90. And then follow that with either a blank or one of these huge numbers. Or if you don't want to do that, you could pick 0. And here are all of the numbers displayed together. Now this problem is very focused on English, but once I got this solution, it got me thinking, what about other languages? Spanish spellings often change when they're pluralized. How bad of a disadvantage is that? Russian has 33 letters. How good of an advantage is that? So I've done this for a number of languages, found some that are better than English, and some that are worse. So I may make a video about that in the future. And to keep things fair between the languages, I had two rules to follow. First, they must be real numbers. And second, they must be dictionary numbers, which means the huge numbers only go up to Vigintillion, or the language's equivalent. And I also used these two rules in this video. But I also tried making a system in English that doesn't use these. By breaking these two rules, we can go from 547 all the way up to around 2 million. Now the math for this is a little more complex, so I didn't want to cover it here, but I may also make a video about this in the future. So, with that, thank you for watching.